In this video, we're going to talk about state machines. And firstly, we're going to have a look at an implementation of state machines with if statements and enumerated types. And then secondly, we're going to have a look at how we implement state machines with an object-oriented approach. And so here we see a state machine diagram, uh, which is modeled using the UML language here. And at the black circle furthest left, is termed as the initial pseudo state, where we begin, basically. And then we see a series of arrows, and these are called transitions. And then we also have a few rectangles, which represent uh, the states themselves. And then finally, that uh, black circle with an outer ring uh, around it is known as the final state. Okay, so that's the terminology of the state machine diagram. And uh, here, we're modeling a weapon being fired. So uh, first of all, if we start at the initial state, that uh, black circle uh, on the furthest left, uh, once we mount the weapon, once we add some rounds, we then transition to the loaded state, okay? And then uh, from there, we could either unmount the weapon and then go to the final state, or if uh, we want to fire, as long as our rounds are greater than zero, you can see that just above the uh, transition from loaded to firing, that condition there, as long as that condition is true, we can then transition to the firing state. Okay, And then from there, of course, we could also unmount the weapon and go back to that final state, or uh, we may wish to reload. So once our rounds uh, hit zero, once we no longer have any bullets, we can then transition to the reload state, okay, on the bottom. And uh, from there, presumably, we add rounds and add bullets. And then from there, we can then transition back to the loaded state, where we, of course, have choices again of whether to unmount the weapon or to fire. So that's the basic logic of this particular example. And uh, if we wanted to keep things simple, we could model this using an enumerated type, uh, which stores the states, and then we can have a series of if statements to monitor if a certain condition is met, we can then transition to a new state. Uh, this is a non-object-oriented solution, which you'll see the enumerate type is declared outside of the main, and uh, there's also a standalone method, which will check the state, and uh, that contains the series of if statements uh, which monitor the conditions to see whether it's possible to then uh, transition to a new state. And uh, it's also worth saying that uh, sometimes it's necessary to execute extra code uh, when a transition occurs that isn't already within the state itself that's being moved to. So here you'll see there's a separate function called onFire which is called when the state transitions to firing. And uh, this is an example of what we would call a callback function, which uh, in this case, just decrement the rounds as we fire the weapon. So a non-object-oriented solution can certainly appeal if we only have a handful of states and transitions to model, but problems start arising when we start to scale this particular approach because when we start to introduce more states and more transitions and things start to become more complicated, the lack of centralization means that access can be an issue, getting access to the particular method that checks uh, the states, and also an ever-increasing method that checks the states will become more difficult to read. And also with such a large amount of comparisons taking place within one method, it can also become easy to introduce invalid transitions as well. So an alternative approach would be to use object orientation, which whilst this would be more code and require more classes, it does make for a more scalable solution, which lends itself to large scale and more complex scenarios. And so if we were to adopt an object-oriented approach, we would represent the states as objects, and we'd also represent transitions as objects too. And then the guards, which are uh, the conditions, which check to see whether a condition has been met before we transition to a new state, uh, we'd model these as functions rather than if statements. And uh, these functions would just return a Boolean value, uh, true or false, to determine 
uh, if we can then transition to a new state. Uh, and each uh, state object would be assigned an enumerated value. And uh, each state object would also contain a list of the transitions that it can make to other states. And uh, we're going to model this uh, using a linked list. Okay, so let's have a look at another example then, uh, which is going to be one of the exercises that we're going to do in just a minute. And here we've got a, a new scenario where we're going to model the functionality of a light bulb. And you can see that we've got three states modeled here, which are on, off, and broken. And uh, the deciding factor uh, to transition to these states is the voltage. So we transition from on to broken if the voltage exceeds 300. And if the voltage was to become zero, we can then transition from on to off. But then from the off state, uh, which isn't the final state, you'll notice, isn't the, the black circle with the ring around it. Instead, this scenario is still live. We haven't reached the uh, final state. And so from the off state, we can then transition to on if we supply a voltage of 240. But again, from the off state, if we supply a voltage of over 300, the light bulb then transitions to the broken state. Okay, so that's the logic for this scenario, uh, the rules, if you like, for how we're going to model this scenario. And so here you'll see the proposed class diagram. And uh, we've got four classes, which are state, transition, FSM, which is short for finite state machine, and finally bulb. And so uh, we've got a lot going on here, and uh, we're not going to be able to cover every single thing in this uh, portion of the video. But uh, as we move into the implementation stage, where we have a go at this example, hopefully a lot more will become clear as we write this code and uh, talk through it as we go. But uh, we'll just finish this video by summarizing the uh, main points that we need to take on. And so here in this view, we can see that the states on, off and broken are modeled as objects. And we also model the transitions as objects too. And each state object will maintain a separate link list for the transitions that correspond to that state. So we'll actually have to iterate through each link list to be able to get to the appropriate transition object. And uh, the reason for doing this is that each transition object will have a pointer to a guard function to determine whether or not that transition can take place. And uh, as we mentioned before, the advantage of an object-oriented solution is that these guard functions can be centrally located. And here in this example, they're located in the bulb object, of which all the transition objects have access to. And then if a particular guard function returns true for a particular condition, then the object of the FSM class, which acts as the management class, it, it's that object which will then change the current state and invoke the callback function if one is required when transitioning to this new state. And here in this particular case, it just outputs a message to let us know uh, what that transition is. Okay, so it's probably best that we uh, pause here and uh, in the next video, we'll have a look at implementing these four classes uh, for the example. Right, okay, so let's have a go at coding this example then. So in the uh, exercises, we're given the state machine diagram here as reference and uh, we're also given summaries of the uh, five classes that we're going to add. Okay, we're gonna have a, a state class, as we said in the previous video, which we create state objects. We can have a transition class uh, to also map the transitions as objects. We're going to have a management class for the uh, finite state machine, which has all the operations for adding states and adding transitions and finding them, etc., etc. Um, and these, uh, these transitions are gonna be stored in a link list, okay, which we've said before. And then finally, we've got the bulb, which bulb class, which defines the logic of uh, the uh, the guard functions, the conditions to which then we transition. Okay, so uh, we'll have a go at creating this uh, uh, class by class. I've already added in the header files just to save time with the appropriate information. Um, and speaking of adding files, it's also best to uh, 
navigate to Blackboard and download these three required files. Okay, given a, a modified link list that uh, has an extra method to work with uh, navigating through the link list in order to add the transitions and also find them again. Uh, we're also going to be storing the uh, enumerated type, the, the actual um, states as an enumerated type in uh, the uh, stdafx file, okay, and then also that requires the target ver file, okay, so download those and also include them in your um, directory and add them, into the, add them into the project, copy them in, okay, as you can see there, I've got them there, all right, so... Um, I say the stdafx file has the um, enumerated type, okay, from which we're then going to uh, refer back to that. Um, and uh, we've also got some uh, function pointers as well, uh, which are going to be useful for callbacks and the guard functions. Okay, so uh, the first uh, class that we're uh, instructed to define is the states class okay so i've done a bit of it already just to save some time uh so there's uh, quite a few classes to do so um I've, I've saved some time by adding in the attributes here you can just see we've got pointers uh to various states and the uh the link list uh for transitions okay and then um from there we're also given the uh, methods so I'm going to go ahead and add these in we've got methods for the constructor so these are for the CPP file but I'm just going to modify them so I can use them in the header file so we've got a, a, a default and a non default we've got sorry we've got two non default constructors here okay um, possibly that hasn't uh, been defined yet so we will see uh, whether that goes whilst we um, add this in. So now we've got some overloaded operators. Okay, I also need to take the uh, scope out of that. All right, uh, let's move on. Okay, so we've got a few more. We've got uh, a method to add the transition from the state. So I'm going to add that in. Also got uh, a method to invoke the callback so we can get back to the previous states and where we came from. All right. So um, next we've got uh, the check guards method. Okay, that's going to be useful for working out whether we can actually move to that uh, next state. Okay, and again, possibly might have a few kind of red lines here. This might be because we haven't yet defined the, the other classes. Okay, we will hold on and see if they disappear uh, as we add in the rest of the methods. Okay, so next we've got the uh, transition class. So again, I've already added this and made a start just to save time. We've got some attributes here. We've got pointers to the from state and to state, as well as pointers to the guard location and uh, also to the next transition. Okay. Also, we're instructed to define a class state here uh, for the purposes of uh, getting access to it within the, uh, within the code for the uh, methods of transition. So let's uh, again, we've we've been uh, given the methods for the transition class, so let's go ahead and add those in. And um, as before, I'm just going to remove the the scope here as I'm working with a header file. We've got the uh, non-default constructor for in, uh, initializing the various pointers, and we've got an invoke guard, okay, which will look for the um, function pointer and then call that function and then we've got a way of getting to the state okay and is that it for that yeah that looks to be it for the uh, transition class let's move on to the fsm the finite state machine so as again i've already got a template for this all right it's just got two uh, pointers this time it's got a uh, pointer to the uh, current state that we're looking at and then also a link list for the particular states. Okay, so 
let's add in some of the methods associated with this. Finite state machine, we've got the uh, constructor first of all, which will just initialize the um, link list in the current state. Uh, then we've got get current state, okay, it just returns it, returns a uh, state pointer, okay. And then we've got uh, we've quite a lot of code here. So we've got the uh, oops, we've got the add state method for inserting a state. Um, okay, and then we've got add transition. All right, which uh, takes the state that we come from and the state we go to, as well as the uh, the guard functions and location. Okay, and I think there's one more I need to add. There is a, a check as well, so let's add that in here. Okay, that's that. Um, what we've got next? Okay, so that looks to be it for the finite state machine. Let's uh, move on to the bulb class. And we've got... Uh, we've got the constructor here, so I'm going to copy that in. Oh, and I should say that the attributes are a pointer to the um, finite state machine and also a, a attribute for the voltage. Okay, for this particular example, that's what we're going to be working with as the um, part of the way to test those conditions. Uh, we're going to change the voltage uh, from 240 to zero to something over 240 to um, trigger the various uh, states and see if we can transition to them. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in this constructor. We're setting up the states, um, what they are, what they can move to, as well as the um, various function pointers here, as well as the uh, transitions. Okay, and then we've got the functions here that define the, uh, they just print out the state. So this is going to be on, on, and then we've got on to off, and then on to broken. Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, do those. And then we've got the guards. Okay, this is the logic of the, uh, the conditions. Okay, so these will have to be called when we want to transition. We need to check to see whether the voltage is uh, um, permissible, whether we can actually go to these particular transitions, depending on the uh, the value of the voltage. Okay, and then finally, we've got a call to the update uh, function in the FSM. Okay, so let's add that in as well. All right, so that looks to be that for the finite state machine. Good, good. Okay, so from there, oh, just need to save that. From there, we're told to go back to main. Okay, so, uh, and also within main, it's best to uh, include the, the bulb, uh, reference to the bulb header or the, uh, the class. I've included the rest just, just in case, but I think yeah, through bulb, you should have access to um, all of the others, all the other references. So from here within main, we're just instructed to uh, create an instance of the bulb class and then uh, change the voltage as as we go throughout this. You may have noticed in the bulb constructor, we actually start with 240, so it should go to on first time. That should be where it begins. Uh, but from there, we're going to change it to zero, so it should then change to off once we call the update function, and then we change it back to 240, so it'll be on again, so the next update should be on. And then we're going to exceed the 240 limits and go to 500 to hopefully break it. So hopefully then it should go to broken afterwards. Okay, so hopefully if we've added all the correct code, let's uh, give this a try. Let's see if we see that. Ah, okay. Got a few minutes. Let's have a look. See what's the problem. Huh, can't find callback. Interesting, because that it should be there. Let's just check that. Ah, lowercase. 
that might have been the problem. Possibly that needs to be lowercase. Uh, let's go and check that in the states. Yeah, modify this to be capital B. Let's just check that up here. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so things that things to look out for the uh, spelling of the uh, variable names let's just make sure that's that yeah okay so let's try again okay so oh there we go that's working now good 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 ah and there we go we do have uh the on on first of all and then on to off and then back on again when we change to 240. And then uh, once we exceed 240, once we go to 500, it will go to broken. Okay, so obviously there's a lot going on here. It's, it can be quite complicated. So um, do check the uh, spellings for um, your attributes and various uh, linkages between the classes um, if you're having any any issues. But hopefully it should be um, hopefully it should be sound. Um, I say my my issue was uh, a my error, <laughs> uh, not having the uh, capital B there. Okay, so um, hopefully you should see that. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Yeah, and there, there's the uh, proof. That's uh, the correct order that we see those in. Okay, so so once you've had a go at this. Um, have a go then, once you've got that up and running, have a go then at the uh, the next exercise, which is to uh, implement a new state machine model uh, based on a weapon, okay? And you can use a similar format to the example, but just modify the logic so that it works with a, with a weapon. Okay, so uh, have a go at that.